So, uh, hello my friends, uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, uh, we'll discuss a little bit about the rejected takeoff. This is the uh, topics uh, which was discussed many times with many YouTubers, with many real pilots and uh, mm, as I have today nothing to do uh, I will try to perform the rigidity takeoff uh, with uh, PMDG uh, and uh, maybe go m a little bit more to the details, okay? Uh, so, um, when you are planning uh, to take off, uh, you have so called V speeds. And uh, remember uh, one thing. One thing is that all the V speeds are real uh, except the V2. Uh, all the V speeds are related to the physical angle of the runway because uh, we have to account. Uh, for example, we are currently at Prague Airport uh, within runway 30, and if you look at the chart, uh, runway 30 uh, from runway ahead. Uh, it has 3250 meters okay uh, so if we are deeply go into the detail uh, uh, we have uh, today on board uh, professional calculators uh, take-off calculators uh, cheaper companies or let's say old companies from mm, from old era has the so-called runway analysis and then you can find uh, the best solution for you. Uh, why we are using these uh, uh, these uh, professional calculators and uh, runway analysis? We are using them before because uh, we would like to uh, reduce the trust if uh, if the payload is low and the runway is long enough, and uh, these calculators. Uh, always offer to us uh, if there is no possibility for example you are flying from Skiatos airport and there is no possible way uh, to let's say make a derate or let's say make an uh, assume temperature method uh, that means that uh, uh, you are on maximum uh, weight uh, in in which you are allowed to f for takeoff, and as well, uh, sometimes uh, it can ch it can happen that uh, you are not allowed takeoff with, with this takeoff weight. So uh, you have to set the higher flap setting, for example, uh, or uh, reduce your payload, or make a nobly takeoff, or if you have APU in operative, unpressurized takeoff. But uh, what I'm talking about, I'm talking about uh, mm, uh, the physical angle of the runway because uh, the wind speeds are related to them. And uh, uh, as I'm not talking uh, too much about the wind speed uh, because uh, you can find it easily on Google, uh, but what I can tell you that they have the sequence uh, in which you have to meet your conditions, okay? So, uh, for example, uh, mm, that could be the V speed, uh, which is, for example, the first one, and it's called uh, uh, VMCG, that means minimum control ground speed. What does it mean? Uh, it means that uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, the minimum speed uh, in which uh, uh, you are allowed to keep the airplane uh, uh, within the center line and uh, with full reflection of rudder uh, you don't deviate or um, or let's say to make an overrun, uh, overrun for the left or right side uh, then you can have, uh, for example, uh, V1 speed, okay, so uh, this is a very famous speed and it's called uh, take of decision speed. Uh, why it's called take of decision speed? Because we are, we, we are deciding 
uh, to reject or to go. Uh, there it is, for example, uh, a minimum unstick speed. Okay. Uh, then we have uh, we rotate speed. Uh, in, this is the speed in which should we should rotate and uh, mm, uh, lift off speeds and we do its uh, its take off safety speed and this speed are no longer related to physical end of the runway but it's always uh, uh, indicated their speed okay that's why we put it into the MCP uh, as you can see right now uh, we can put it put it right over here okay uh, so and uh, what we are going to do if you have so long runway uh, if we have so long runway we are trying uh, to make a balanced takeoff what does it mean balanced takeoff uh, we should have unbalanced takeoff and balanced takeoff unbalanced takeoff is basically the takeoff uh, in which it should be on the safe side that means that uh, uh, mm, we didn't reduce thrust and we take off uh, very rapidly and and our accelerate stop distance available uh, this is important and other terms uh, it's a uh, far away uh, mm, more uh, than uh, take of run or let's take of distance available okay and professional uh, calculators uh, should have all these numbers uh, right over here uh, depicted so uh, they easily know uh, the take of run available for runway 30 is is this point uh, they are fully uh, the professional calculators are fully aware about the uh, let's say uh, stop way clear way uh, because if you have clear way uh, your take of distance available is uh, much more higher then take of run ava available. What does it mean? It means that uh, your V1 is okay, but uh, you can move your rotate speed into the higher conditions. That means that you can uh, carry on, uh, let's say, more uh, traffic load. Okay. So uh, now we have discussed the V speeds, and we have discussed, uh, for example, the term in uh, what is take of run available what is take of distance available, what is accelerate stop distance available, okay? And if you have professional calculator, he will calculate it for you, uh, the best solution which will fit to you in order to reduce the workload of the engines during the takeoff, reducing the lifespan of the engines, and it leads to conditions that uh, if you exactly uh, reject takeoff on V1, uh, you should stop uh, the airplane uh, exactly on the end of the runway. Okay. Uh, sometimes when you have clear way, uh, uh, you may you may overrun it, and uh, but uh, it is uh, the clear way. It's uh, mainly there for uh, for takeoff reasons. So that means that. Uh, your take of distance available uh, means that uh, you are on the end of the runway within 35 feet of height. Okay, uh, so this is this is the balanced takeoff and uh, unbalanced takeoff uh, once again on the negative side. That means that uh, you have low power, uh, so that means that. Uh, uh, your unstick speed, or let's say your uh, rotation of your air air airplane, uh, will be uh, will be far far away. Will be uh, will be too much, and your V1, uh, if you reject the takeoff, uh, leads to overrun. But if you are uh, with a safe side, uh, you have a plenty, or let's say your accelerate stop distance available is much more than a take of distance available. That's why we are using two methods on Boeing 737. One method is called D-Rate. Uh, D-Rate is simple method which is patented by the Boeing and it tells to the engine electronic control unit, or let's say FedEx, that uh, hey man, 
uh, uh, now you don't have 20k engines but you have 24k engines okay so uh, uh, this is the derate and the benefits for derate are short runways and contaminated runways uh, why I am mentioning contaminated runways uh, because if you are using SM temperature uh, the SM temperature uh, doesn't account with temperature correction error that means that your indicated airspeed related to true airspeed in in the day conditions should differ uh, from for example 5 knots to twen up to 20 knots uh, imagine 20 knots and this should be incorporated into your runway analysis uh, this margin uh, so, so that's why the assumed temperature method is conservative but the D-rate uh, you can always uh, use it without any further problems uh, with short runways and contaminated runways and Boeing says that uh, during the season uh, you can save 45% uh, of your money on your takeoff and that's a quite high number it's a really high number uh, but a little bit stop talking now and uh, come to another fact uh, we have for example wet runway uh, what is the difference between dry and wet runway I am mm, not right talking about contaminated runway uh, the difference is that your accelerated stop distance available will be uh, much more higher uh, because of the aquaplaning and uh, reduced braking method. Uh, so that means that your uh, wheel speed is coming down uh, uh, related to your uh, rotation speed. So that's why if you have uh, if you have proper calculator, you can see that on wet runway your V1 is much more lower than your rotate speed and now we are coming to a rejected takeoff and what the rejected takeoff is uh, basically uh, most of the companies has the procedure that up to 80 knots uh, up to 80 knots if uh, any recall uh, appears any master caution appears sorry no recall any master caution appears uh, you will reject the takeoff okay but you will do it with the way okay I will disengage auto throttle close the thrust levers press press uh, braking pedals and uh, leave it gently with the brakes and uh, get out of the runway uh, without any further problems because 80 knots you have plenty runway inside of you okay uh, so uh, this is uh, uh, this is uh, prior to 80 knots what if I am after 80 knots after 80 knots the situation it's uh, much more worse because uh, you are at higher speed and with this speed uh, you may only reject takeoff uh, due to a few reasons one reason is uh, engine failure uh, or fire, uh, fire on board, airplane unsafe to fly, and uh, wind shear uh, presented. So that means that uh, suddenly you hear whoop, uh, uh, wind shear, wind shear ahead. So you 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 have to uh, reject the takeoff, okay? And with this high speed. Uh, it's uh, hardly uh, you will blow your tires or your brakes are too hot so that means that you stop on the runway and wait for the brake cooling uh, it, sh it will cost um, a lot of time uh, but uh, if you are able to make it turn to taxiway in order not to block the runway uh, it should be quite perfect and the sequence is that approximately around 100 uh, you can see that th there is a thrust hold the thrust hold means that uh, auto throttle is connected uh, it's fully workable but uh, any input uh, you make into your thrust levers 
uh, leads to a conditions that uh, your trust uh, is moving uh, down okay so uh, if I have trust uh, uh, trust trust hold on FMA uh, I will close the trust de levers uh, without disengaging the autopilot but what is the proper procedure and how the pilots are making proper procedure on Boeing 737 uh, it's uh, uh, it's not so complicated so uh, he will close the thrust levers simultaneously disengage the auto throttle because it should be uh, for example a failure of auto throttle and uh, thrust hold condition raise the speed brakes uh, you shouldn't raise the speed brakes when you have fully deployed the mm, thrust reversers but we have to do that uh, that's the procedure uh, the base the, the best procedure uh, how to stop the airplane in the shorter distance so once again disconnect uh, close the thrust levers simultaneously disconnect the auto throttle and uh, then uh, you will raise the speed brakes, apply full reverse, apply ma ensure maximum uh, braking or press brakes and brake it uh, ma maximum and the uh, first officer should call 60 knots that means that closing thrust reverse and he will call for emergency assistance if we have for example engine fire and we will need to perform the evacuation okay so this is the correct procedure uh, how to do it uh, with Boeing 737 uh, so now we are back and uh, I will preset all the airplane uh, except one except a uh, few things uh, and that is uh, the here you can select the temperature that means that you are uh, you can combine the SM temperature method which is conservative as I said before uh, and it's not allowed or uh, on uh, contaminated runways and uh, uh, here you can uh, the D rate take off sometimes in some situations with uh, if you have professional but professional uh, OPT uh, uh, it means that uh, if you uh, take for example uh, a less uh, D rate uh, for example not 24 but 22 you can increase your payload uh, it's very it's very simple way but it's hard to explain it to you uh, but it has something in common with VMCG uh, because in this case you decrease the VMCG and the, it leads to increase your trust but this is for uh, uh, for a separate discussion uh, what is the SM temperature and what is the D rate but if you fill it uh, with the proper way uh, so uh, you will hardly any prob uh, have any problem we don't have so far the performance calculator so I will do it right now uh, with this way uh, so I will put it um, let's say uh, according to my experience and as you can see uh, we have wet runway and still it's uh, mm, it's uh, uh, it's uh, it's rainy conditions uh, as you can see from this picture uh, below uh, runway 30 has 3200 meters uh, of takeover run available uh, this leads to me that uh, if I am flying from London Luton which has uh, 2000 meters of runway I will use flaps 5 for takeoff but in this case uh, with this long runway we can easily use flaps 1 without any problems okay so we can put the trim 5.5 And now we have the V speeds. Uh, this first 
do these speeds are related uh, into uh, your physical end of the runway so uh, for example uh, when you look at the runway analysis or your professional electronic flight back uh, you will realize uh, that uh, there are headwind and tailwind component adjustment why uh, because with a headwind uh, you can increase uh, your uh, s uh, indicated airspeed because it's uh, uh, it's uh, it's it's closer to your true airspeed uh, in which we have we, which we should have if you have tailwind component of 10 knots for example which is the uh, basically s little bit to the limitations uh, and all in the limitations for some NGs uh, that means uh, that uh, your speed will be slower because otherwise you overshoot the true airspeed and it leads to unbalanced takeoff okay so as we can see we have uh, rain, uh, rainy conditions uh, 340 and at, at, at 4 knots okay so uh, so three four zero at four knots okay uh, that's it and you can see that the QRH speed uh, which is uh, uh, which FMC takes from QRH it should be uh, when you compute it uh, it's 135 137 146 but it's not true because uh, we have rainy conditions so uh, if I change it to wet conditions uh, basically these speeds uh, should be the same and uh, we want speed uh, should be much lower so we put the wet runway and go back and now you can see boom rotate is the same uh, we two is the same but the v1 is one to four so our takeoff decision speed is slower because uh, we need to have uh, proper accelerate stop distance available due to aquaplaning and uh, possible uh, possible um, uh, not so perfect braking okay and uh, uh, and uh, now I am jumping to V2 speed and V2 speed uh, it's always uh, it's so called uh, take of safety speed what does it mean uh, that if you are uh, uh, climbing with this speed uh, you should be uh, above any obstacles uh, within uh, LC within engine and operative SID so that's why uh, we are putting uh, uh, V2 speeds uh, right over there Okay guys, I'm back. Uh, I need to restart my computer. Uh, I have some problem with it for a long time, so please disregard the situation. Uh, anyway, I configured the airplane nearly the same as before. Uh, I assume the runway is wet because we were talking about the wet runway and, um, and uh, we have slightly uh, uh, slightly different uh, V2 speed so uh, now we are trying to perform the, mm, the rejected takeoff and so once again up to 80 knots any reasons we will reject after 80 knots uh, engine fa uh, failure we have fire on board predictive venture and airplane unsafe to fly uh, and any other very serious reasons to reject the takeoff and uh, uh, now we will reject the takeoff um, because uh, let's imagine um, mm, we don't lose the engines but we have predictive venture for example at V1 so uh, we will reject takeoff at V1 uh, some pilots and some examinators are rejecting takeoff 5 knots prior to V1 because uh, if you reach the V1 uh, so uh, 
uh, you need to account for uh, some time for reaction and so on but uh, this is all uh, this is not true it's it's incorporated uh, within uh, within VEF uh, that means uh, 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 V engine failure. So when the failure occurs, uh, you have one second of reaction to do, and then you can perform uh, the rejected takeoff. And once again, the rejected takeoff, how it looks like, uh, it's uh, really simple. So uh, that means that. Uh, uh as as we are talking before uh closing thrust levers simultaneous disengage auto throttle rising speed brakes apply full reverse thrust and monitor the deceleration or uh, let's say uh, perform manual braking with full reverse thrust okay so uh Parking brake is released, flaps are on one, I guess uh, we have everything set up, so uh, uh, let's, let, let's jump and uh, let's go for it. Okay, so we have stable engine, so press uh, toga button, we have N1 toga, and now we can go. So we have uh, 80 knots. Okay, stop. I will deviate a little bit because uh, I don't have the three hands, uh, only one hand, so closing thrust reverse, closing uh, speed brakes, and then we have auto brake, these are manual braking. Uh, so as you can see, uh, uh, with, as we don't have the ascent temperature and proper derate, uh, if you look uh, from the outside, there is the plenty of runway uh, for us uh, to stop. So uh, we perform unbalanced takeoff, because if it is balanced takeoff, we will stop exactly near the same of uh, near the end of the runway. So. Uh, so that's it and uh, I hope you like this video and see you next time soon. Bye bye.